I want to welcome you to our new little fly tying film series. We call it Pattern of the Month because we're going to present you a new pattern every month. Uh, it's going to be my best flies, my most well-known uh, fly patterns. Uh, hopefully I can give you some tricks on how I use uh, the FIT system, SSS and our other materials. And uh, I can show you what I think is important for tying that perfect fishing fly. Uh, together with this, we uh, put together a little pack with the, all the materials you need to tie at least 10 of these flies. We selected the uh, natural materials, hairs and hackles are uh, really good. And we filled it up with, with the rest of our synthetics and the fits that comes um, from our own products. Uh, we also, if you're not a tyer, um, uh, or if you need some extra flies, we put together a pack with six of the flies that uh, I'm going to tie. Both these packs also comes in a subscription form, where you can uh, decide to subscribe to a pack and you will get it in the mail a couple of days before the film will pop up in our YouTube channel. Um, Hopefully this is uh, something you like and hopefully you will enjoy uh, the tying uh, that I'm going to start now. The first pattern I'm going to give you is of course Patagorva. Um, it's my best known pattern. It's a fly that's been giving me many many great fish and it's taken tens of thousands of great fish uh, on salmon rivers all around the world. Uh, I'm going to tie it on a TTT, on a turbo tungsten tube. Um, it's, um, it's a simple way of tying, uh, but it also adds a little weight that will help you stretch your leader, get the fly down a little bit, and make it start swimming immediately. I hope you enjoyed this, and um, let's see uh, what we can do here. Okay, so we're going to tie on the TTT, uh, the turbo tungsten tube. Uh, they come in three sizes. They are four, six and eight millimeters. And uh, they weigh uh, half a gram, nine, uh, 0 0.9 and 1.3. And uh, I'm uh, going to tie on the big one today. Um, the first thing you need to do is that you need to line it with plastic. Uh, I used, of course, the uh, extra small fits tubing and the thing with the fits tubing is to make this durable it needs to be really really tight between the uh, the tube and the plastic so this people are having problems here it doesn't really fit right but I show you the tricks <clears throat> what you do is that you take the extra small and you cut it uh, at an angle and then you just pull it in, make sure you get it to come out a little bit. I use a little plier here uh, to pull this and then you just pull it through. Uh, there's another way of doing this that's really simple too and that is that you take the tubing and you just put the pliers and you pull it a little bit and when you stretch, taking the wrong scissors here, uh, taking, uh, when you stretch it uh, the diameter uh, drops down and it's really easy to just hold it and pull it through. We, um, I just pulled through a bit. What I do then is that I cut it and I take this and I melt a little bit of, uh, of the extra small hair. So I get a little edge so it won't slip through the, the tube. So, and then I wait a little bit until this just dries up and then I pull it down so it's tight and put it on. And of course I use our, <coughs> sorry. And of course I use our, our fits <coughs> needle with the four different diameters that fits with all our four different diameter tubing. I'm going to tie with a SSS thread, a 12-0 thread, and uh, I tie most of my flies with a 12-0 with a actually, some with the stealth too, but I use uh, 
uh, very little uh, heavier thread. The important thing with the thread is that it's thin and also that it's very, very flexible. You can see how this is flexing. It's the flexibility in the thread that will hold the material. I've been using this thread now for 15 years and it's just the best thread I have. Okay, <clears throat> so we start with the half cup. Um, I use, of course, our SOS wallets to keep my stuff. But they are, uh, it's a really, really neat way of keeping material, actually. Uh, I will take quite a big feather. I want to have long uh, <clears throat> hackle fibers and I strip it off. And I do the same as I do with all hackles. I tie it in in the tip. And since I have a very heavy diameter here, I will need quite a long part of feather. So I can wind, wind it and up um, turns. i show you a little trick, trick here. When I'm cutting, I always make support. So I take the scissors and put the scissors uh, on my finger before I cut. This way, hopefully you can see it here, this way I'm very accurate and I can cut and I can uh, do the little triangle uh, which is the one I'm tying in. And I tie it close to the TTT, to the opening <coughs> of the TTT. Uh, it works like this, they're 4, 6 and 8 millimeters, so they create 4, 6 and 8 centimeter long turbulent stream. So this is going to be a big fire, okay? I tie it in by forming three fingers as a little triangle where I hold back the part that I'm tying in. If I do it like this, I double without preparing the feather before I tie it in. It's a really simple and a fast way of doubling the hackle. Doubling meaning I get all the fibers one side of the center of the feather. Tie it in, I put one or two or three turns before I take the pressure onto the thread and just tie it in. I work normally with three to six uh, turns of thread. <clears throat> then I divide the hackle, take the thread and I tie it down. Same way you do on a hooked classical fly where you need to divide and get make room for the wing. First thing I put in then is a bit of flash. On some of the really flashy flies, I use our Flashaboo. <clears throat> Here I'm gonna use our Angular HD. I take a few fibers, hold them wide, about half a centimeter between my fingers, and I tie them in, one or two turns, take them and fold them back. By folding back the fibers, they uh, can't slip. <clears throat> then cutting them off, if I cut them like this, they're going to be the same length, they're going to come together and the fly won't swim as good. So I don't do this, I taper by taking the scissors and pull and cut from above like this. If I get one or two strands too long, I can cut them off afterwards. Then we go for the first wing. First wing should be the biggest part of the wing, about 60-70% of the full wing. I cut it off, move my fingers and brush it through. By brushing I take away some of this uh, uh, bad material in the bottom, but I also brush it through by untangle it like this. Here I get a, a very, very nice wing. Then I move up my fingers to up to where I have about half the wing length. Then I pull out the center fibers and that's for uh, making this wing taper. So I get fewer long tapering fibers like this. I can then look at the wing, so it's really got a little bit of taper before I tie it in. I hold it about 
between a half and a one centimeter between my fingers and I put it in. Look at the wing length and one thing you can do wrong is to make a too long first wing. Look at how long I want it, hold it and tie it in. Here I can use quite a few turns of thread. Move my fingers back, take the thumbnail and press this down on the side so I get a very wide fly. Looks like I don't have it too far down on the side closest to you. <clears throat> and then I just cut. I cut this off close to the TTT. Just lean the scissor against the metal part and clean up. It's always good to clean everything up between everything you tie in. How does that look? Looks good, I think. And then, <clears throat> time for a little more flash. I use angel hair, the thinnest uh, fibers we have, and uh, I use uh, the color we call Nasty Rusty. It's a nice blend. Uh, all SSS materials have five colors in the blend. I do the same with this, spread it so I have about half a centimeter between uh, my fingers and tie it in wide. One or two turns, fold it back and tie it in. Same here, instead of cutting, I take this and I cut and taper. So I get different length of this. Same thing here, if I have one or two that's too long, I can take them away afterwards. Okay, so then it's the second part of the wing. This should be longer, thinner, and you should use the best hair you have. Uh, it's important for the way the fly is swimming that you get really, really soft hair on the top. Uh, I look through this. Sometimes you can, you can tie a fly with a little stiffer uh, wing in the bottom, but when I use the TTTs or the turbos, they will open up with a turbulent stream. So I don't need that to make the flies don't collapse. They can't collapse anyway. I treat this the same. Brush through. Now I can see I have way too much. So I move up my fingers and I take away some of this that are the shorter fibers to get a wing that has about 20% or 30% of the total wing length. Look at the tapering and pull a little bit. So I get few fibers here. For the fish, uh, for the flies fishing, this is really swimming. This is really a, an important part of it. Stretch it out, make sure you see that you get a good taper before you tie it in. To be sure the wing is right, I can just touch it, feel it so it's thick here and it's getting more and more tapered with very few strands. If I think it's too bulky, I can even take a few of these. You can see I have one and a half centimeter here and I can pull them out, pull out the centimeter here without them disappearing. But I think this is good. I don't need to, so I just do the same, put my fingers, pull this and put the scissors against the TTT, make sure it's clean. I have a few fibers too far down here, as this means I can just take it away. I always try to look at the wing, it should be white like this, the movement that here the fish will see. What's happening here the fish won't see. So put another <coughs> few strands of uh, angel hair on there, not too many. Same, hold them wide, tie them in, double back and tie in. And make sure to move the thread back towards the TTT. 
and it's like with this like all fly tying you should not put the materials in front of you need to put them on top of each other you have only a few millimeters to build up the wing and build the fly okay then i'm gonna put some peacock on top i use uh, a peacock that is dyed uh, i use an orange dyed one here and the great thing about peacock is that it's one of these feathers that's got a natural fluorescence to them uh, they uh, are a bit fragile catch a few fish they will be broken but uh, they start off in a really really good way and uh, looking really nice adding some fluorescence so I spread this this can be a little bit tricky I spread this between my fingers, three to five of them. There's two, just too close, like that. And I put them on and I look so I have the same length as the longest fibers here. Take them, hold them down and tie them in. If I'm lucky, they won't fold. Here's one that's folded the wrong way. I only do like this. Take it up, if I need it, I just tie it in again. But it's still easier to try to tie them all in at the same time instead of take, taking them one, one by one. And I'm going to tie in two jungle socks as sides and I'm going to use natural feathers uh, this time. But please be sure to use uh, feathers with a situs on so you uh, do it legally and do it right. It's kind of ridiculous to save wild salmon one hand and, and extinct birds the other hand. We have to do this in the right way. Okay, these are curving different ways. They're all oh, they're straight. Very few feathers curve the way we want them. But <clears throat> what you can do is you can wet this and you can put it and let it dry on something form it the way you want and it dries up it'll be the perfect shape but when it gets wet it goes back to the original shape so what I do I shape it mechanically by pulling it over my thumbnail and doing this I can make this feather curve exactly the way I want it to I want to tie it in fairly long because I'm going to have the hackles uh, in front and also I use smaller feathers than most people. Uh, I want to show the full feather and not only the tip. It's just a matter of taste. But also the top is stiffer. If you tie in it too, too tight it will, it will uh, affect the way the fly is swimming. Tie it in. Always start on this side, it looks good my side, meaning that I can take the other side, make sure to curve it. And I can either twist the fly or I can just take this and look from the top and make sure I get this to be the right length and tie it in. Looks good. Okay, wing is ready. Cut this off. Cut every time you tie something in. Looks good. Here I can see I have one of these bastards. Okay, uh, now I put a little glue here, uh, making uh, this to be the strongest from the weakest to the strongest part of the fly. And when I work with super glue, I always use support. So I put one finger on and I get a little support before I put this on. I want to have this glue in the right place. I don't want it to mess up things with, with my finger and get uh, glue into the wing that should swim the right way. Okay. So now we're going to put some hackles on and uh, I already have one hackle that's supporting from underneath but now I'm going to put 
uh, on two more hackles. I will do um, a white ding. Um, see what we have here. I'm going to do a white ding uh, hen feather. Uh, comes from the one with the chickaboo. This is really, really soft. Uh, maybe too soft, but uh, no, I think I'll take that. It looks good. Strip it off. Make sure I get enough fibers here. Uh, do the little triangle, use support and cut it off and tie it in. And secure it with one or two extra turns. You can see now that, that uh, I tie everything onto the metal part of the TTT. I don't go down on the plastic until the last turns or a couple of turns of hackle. So I'll do this and I double it same way I did before by holding back the fibers, putting in on the turns, make sure they fold the right way. One or two or three turns will be good. This will help create volume to the fly, but also, of course, motion. Hold it, tie it in. Make sure to be on top of the TTT still. Back with the fibers, if one or two of them will fall the wrong way, it doesn't really matter and tie it in. So you get the nice shape of the hackle. Here's another one of those I don't want. Okay, so I end up by doing a soft hackle. And if I wouldn't use a TTT or a, a turbo uh, in front, I couldn't use material soft as this, they would collapse for sure. But uh, with the turbo opening up uh, or the TTT opening up, the turbulent stream, I can use this very super soft materials. I do the same. These can be a bit tricky to tie with. I hold back the fibers, support and cut the little triangle and tie it in. I'm still on the TTT and now I move down the thread in front of the TTT on the plastic on the extra small. Then I take this, <clears throat> I could tie this, do this with a hackle plier, it would be easy for you to see, but it's I have more control winding this without a plier. One turn on top of the TTT and then I take it down and put the last hackle fibers onto the extra small tubing. Secure it, hold back the fibers, couple of extra turns and you will now see how this will create a lot of movement. It can look a little messy and then I can take my scissors and just untangle this. They are wound on so they are a little bit uneven like that. Okay. So now I'll uh, take a, a little turbo uh, and I have them in my own <laughs> new box. We have a new uh, Organizing box here that's uh, turned out really nice. It will be on the market very shortly 24 compartments uh, in a clear box I'll use now um, The micro one and the thing is that without the turbo I would have needed to use a smaller uh, a, a bigger one to create Turbulence, but now I have the turbulence already because of the TTT so I use a really small, a micro turbo disc. And uh, 
Of course, I could have ended this with the thread head, but the thread head is so, it's not so durable. These are very, very durable. Thread will be damaged and the hackles might be damaged, but this will, will protect the thread and the hackle for me. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and I have to be really careful here because these hackles will suck up the glue if I'm not careful. I could put it on the thread and wind it on, but I can also do this. I take the glue and I put a little bit of glue like a few millimeters away from the hackle and then I hold back these and I take the thread and I pick up the glue and just pull it in towards the TTT. Very easy, the hackles can suck up and it will be durable and, and make the thread stay there. Then I take the turbo disc and I pull it down and I pull it down really, really tight. When I've done that, take away the thread, fly is ready, ready to move out of the vise. So I take it away, hold back the hackles, use one finger as a support and I cut it approximately three millimeters away. Then, it's <clears throat> a smart guy Newton who found out that things want to go this way too gravitation right so but what I do if I melt it like this we don't we're not gonna make it have a hole for the leader but if I do it like this this will just the fits tubing will just open up like a nice little flower melt it down and it will hold the cone and we will have a hole for the leader very simple way of tying flies but I'll get uh, extremely effective. Uh, see if I can get this on here. Do not. Uh, we will get a very effective fishing fly. Here we go. And a fly that will move and hold its volume and drop form even in the fastest current. This I fish loose on the leader and I'm now going to show you how I do uh, with the bodies and how I can uh, I can change bodies to what kind of conditions I'm fishing. Uh, now one thing that we should think about and that is when we are putting this on to, to a body or, or, or a little tube that will hold the hook is where we want the hook. A salmon will take the fly from the side. I prefer not to have my hook in the back. I prefer to have it in the middle. When I fish for sea trout, I have it further back. People say that, oh, but they pull here. I would say that if you have fish pulling, it's because you fish your fly too slow. Fish them, speed them up, and they will grab it from the side. I carry like this. I carry one of my small wallets and I carry it with plastic tubing, medium mostly in different length and color. I have uh, dubbing bodies where I dub on a body and I have also hackled bodies, uh, full bodies to make the more classic appearance to the fly. I'm going to show you now what I do. I take this out. <clears throat> I use um, medium fits. And uh, uh, this is really simple fly tying. I put some thread on. I use Mirage. I like the Mirage material, which uh, picks up the colors from, from the other materials you have in your fly. And I always want my fly to taper, meaning that I want the, the narrowest part to be in the back and then the body should grow. So this is now my absolutely thinnest material make sure I have five or six millimeters of bare tubing here I get uh, the fluorescent part that I want from the tubing tie this in I go back and forth to double it up uh, <clears throat> then I do uh, 
I take two of the braids. Uh, we're gonna use the nasty rusty hollow braid. Fantastic color, I think. And we're gonna use another hollow braid, the gold one. Uh, really bright actually and uh, the good thing with this material is first of all it's really 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 strong but it also uh, can tw to twin down to any ribbing I start by tying in the gold one followed by the rusty nasty rusty one and the good thing with this being this thin is that I can <clears throat> overlap it. So if I take this and I uh, just wind it on like this, I can put the turns on top each of each other like this to make this body grow. I can even do like this. I can go front and then I can go back and turn and go front. So I get a tapered tinsel body. Tie it in. Then I take a little bit of dubbing. I use the Glitz. Glitz is the one of the two dubbings we have. Glitz have the longest fiber, but up to eight centimeter fibers, really, really long. I uh, dub them on, spin them on, just by twisting fingers. I very seldom use a dubbing twister or loops. I just spin it on. Make sure you press your fingers hard together. And then I tie it in a little bit at a time. Back and forth to support the material. Make this body grow. So it's... Um, Thickest in the front part. Maybe need a little more here. Here we go. Take a little bit more. And the long fiber is really, really easy to dub too. Make sure I go almost all the way to the front before I pull back the dubbing fibers and secure the thread in front. Then I take a hackle and here I'm going to use this uh, orange badio one. Uh, pick one uh, with a really nice black center in a good size. Pull back the fiber so I can look at it. Strip it off to where I'm gonna tie it in and tie it in underneath. And uh, this is a really stiff feather so I need to put a few extra turns here. And then I tie it off, uh, cut it off, sorry. And here I can make a mistake by starting to just winding this back, meaning I don't get any fibers here. Uh, but I do that like this. I always start by putting one turn in the front before I wind it down. Normally on a, uh, on a bo full body it's five turns. Since I have a tag and a tube, I do four. I hold the feather, then I take the ribbing. And the good thing now with the with the SSS braid is that I can spin this. I spin it down to become a really, really strong, very durable ribbing. And I can spin it down to do any size. I can even spin down this one to be used on a size 10. I then uh, go around the, the hackle crossing over like I just did, you saw me there. Take away the tip, take away this. Put a few more turns. <clears throat> then take a little glue. 
once again support by the finger and put a little glue on here. I can also melt this part if I want afterwards, but um, I'm mostly happy with it looking like this. Then I take my brush and um, the thing is with dubbing, I don't understand what people dub without brushing because the, the, the whole thing with dubbing is to get the fibers to blend together with the, with the hackle like this. And I brush it really hard. And if you've done this right, the fly can take this. Should be able, like that. Looking really nice. Here I now created, uh, like what I would say is a full body. Uh, I uh, take away the thread and I show you how I work this onto the fly. Uh, let me show you how I do this now. I take the fly first and I put the leader through the little hole that I melted. Uh, and uh, then I can decide how uh, bulky I want this body to be. I can fish it with uh, a bare tube like this and it will be fairly slim and very translucent or I can use the body I had there. So this is what I made right now. I take this other device and uh, I just put it through and I take my hook I've chosen to um, let's tie this in a little fast here and uh, I choose in a golden salor here uh, tie it on like that a little fast like that okay then the body will slide down and the Tubing is so flexible, so you just pull that onto there. I'm gonna just cut off this leader here, and I'm show you. And then the TTT will slide down, and I will have a full-bodied fly like this. If I choose to have the the bare tube it will be more translucent and I can mix any color I can even do uh, a body that's only a bit of uh, glitz dubbing or the bare tube I can do anything here which means this way of fishing it's really really flexible for me and this is one of the big advantages with the TTT where I can decide how much light I want to go through it, how much color I want to have onto it, just by putting up my little uh, wallet and pick out the body that I think is good for the accurate situation I have on the river on that special occasion. So, TTT, uh, Patagorba, it's the first fly we now did in uh, the Pattern of the Month series of films. I hope you liked it and I hope you can also maybe adjust this to your personal uh, best and, uh, and uh, maybe uh, pick your personal best colors for the river you have and you can tie all different variations on this. I do some with the uh, uh, orange underwing that I call Shera Gorba and then I fish it uh, like this, actually like this most of the time. It's a very, very nice fight. Thank you for watching.